All right, hey guys, welcome to Edge Analysis, where every week we go behind the scenes of blockchain technologies and interview the staff of the top, bottom, and middle market cap projects. This is your host, Kuji, and if you're wondering, yes, I do like to shoot flaming arrows while riding bareback on a Galapagos tortoise. On the other side of the world, we have our co-host, Fox. Finance Fox. Finance Fox. You could just call me Jesse during the podcast. Oh, okay. Are you sure? I kind of like Fox better. <laughs> you I, can call you, I can call you Jesse, I guess. Um, all right, so today we have Polly Crypto Blog from Komodo on the line. Uh, Polly, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Uh, can you give us a quick introduction of yourself, who you are, and what you do at Komodo? Um, sure. My uh, name is uh, my, my handle is Polly Crypto Blog. Um, do uh, business development at Komodo, uh, which is basically finding uh, different services and parties to integrate into our ecosystem, uh, whether that's exchanges or um, different uh, types of applications, uh, you know, such as uh, APIs or um, merchants who wish to accept us, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I've been with Komodo uh, since even before Komodo was around uh, back in the SuperNet days. Um, so it's been about like uh, three years now. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and deeply involved in the, the project and, uh, try to spread the word everywhere I can about it. All right. Um, can you give us, uh, just a quick project elevator pitch of what Komodo is for everyone that's kind of new to hearing, uh, the Komodo name? Sure. Komodo is a complete blockchain ecosystem. Um, is focused on uh, developer uh, autonomy. Um, unlike many other blockchain ecosystems, uh, which force you to build on top of their platform or via a side chain or a child chain um, or a token, uh, Komodo gives you a completely independent blockchain uh, to do your development on. And the advantages of this are that um, in case uh, some sort of a uh, uh, bug happens. You don't have to appeal to the main blockchain for a rollback. Uh, you can you have full control over the destiny of your application and aren't sub subject to arbitrary changes such as an in increase in fees. Nice. Now I heard that uh, this could be rumor, but I heard that the name Komodo had something to do with the founder being obsessed with lizards. Uh, is it named after the Komodo dragon? Is that true? Yes, uh, that's true. Um, originally, uh, our founder, JL777, uh, created a uh, Bitcoin Core implementation written in uh, C language um, called Iguana. And from that, uh, several other projects were born, uh, such as Basilisk and, and Geckos and uh, Gamma, which is our wallet. And um, when he came up with the delay proof of work mechanism, which needed its uh, own independent blockchain, um, which was like the, uh, you know, the center of the ecosystem, if you will, then uh, it, it just was fitting to use uh, Komodo, which is the biggest lizard in, in the world. So, uh, yeah, you that could say cool. he's best with lizards. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, is it a requirement for all staff to also like lizards at that point? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so... Uh, what uh, exclusive, innovative technologies that you get, do you guys have that no one else has? Well, our most exclusive technology is uh, delayed proof of work. So that is a um, additional consensus mechanism that allows uh, checkpointing onto the committed blockchain and consequently onto Bitcoin blockchain. To, uh, prevent 51% attacks from happening in Genesis attacks. Okay. Uh, additionally, we have uh, pioneered uh, atomic swaps technology. Um, ever since uh, 2014, uh, JL777 has been uh, working on this, and we have a uh, fully functional uh, uh, GUI for atomic dex, uh, atomic swaps uh, called Barter Dex. All right. So, what uh, what would you guys say is your uh, biggest advantage, then? Like in in all of blockchain. Uh, our biggest uh, advantages uh, really have to do with the way that we treat uh, other projects who want to be part of the ecosystem. Um, 
if you're familiar with Ethereum, uh, if somebody yeah. builds a, a contract and runs it, um, you're competing with uh, for block space um, with other with tons of other projects. And if one happens to be uh, insanely successful, like how CryptoKitties was, um, that could hurt your, your business model. Um, if gas fees uh, go insanely high or, or transactions just can't go through, um, that that could totally destroy someone's business. Uh, so uh, I would say that would be our greatest advantage is the way we treat developers and uh, who come into our ecosystem by just giving them the ability to uh, have uh, unfiltered uh, development on their own blockchain. Now, you mentioned that the uh, the gas is like not having to worry about paying the gas if the gas fees go up and that kind of thing. So. Uh, what is, uh, like, are there any special requirements for Komodo? Like, do you have to pay a, a, a fee of any kind? Or is it all, like, entirely based on each blockchain project based on the Komodo platform? Um, okay, so for projects that are uh, running their own applications on their chain, that is paid in that chain's own coin. Um, the only time that Komodo is uh, um, required is if they did elect to use some of our services like delayed proof of work or um, zero confirmation trading on, on barter decks. Um, however, these are not required at all whatsoever. Um, it's, it's totally optional. Um, we don't believe in forcing people into using a service. If, if people use our services because it's the best choice for what they're looking for. So is the the service itself is that more of a centralized entity? Uh, no, it is okay. So in Komodo, there are uh, special nodes called notary nodes, and uh, these are democratically democratically elected uh, from the Komodo uh, coin holders. Uh, once a year, we hold an election. Uh, you get one vote per coin, and to choose whatever operator is you know best. Uh, fitting your, your objectives for the, the currency. Um, there are some notary node operators that ran on a platform of creating projects, others that are on more of a marketing end, and others who uh, are just, uh, who got elected straight because of their technical merit. Um, so it, it varies uh, quite uh, the uh, reasons why uh, the notary node operators are part of the ecosystem, but it is, um, not centralized as it's uh totally chosen by the people who um are invested okay. in this ecosystem. okay um so what would you guys say would be uh on the flip side of that what would be your your biggest weaknesses um in in the blockchain space um our our biggest weaknesses i would say um is uh Hmm. would be uh, partially has to do with the uh, decentralization is that sometimes it's hard to interact with uh, all the different devs mm -hmm. all over the world <laughs> the, yeah. which the nature of the beast I guess <laughs> um, but uh, beyond that um, I, I don't think there really is much in the way of uh, technical limitations re regarding Komodo okay. uh, it's, it was purposely made to be adaptive and uh, because you know, in the in the future, you don't know what kind of uh, you know blockchains will be needed for an ecosystem, what characteristics, what parameters they have to be spun up with. Um, so Komodo allows people to do that uh, relatively simply and not uh, lock them into something as you know when they uh, yeah you know decide to change. Okay, so you don't see any other like any DAP platforms out there doing anything that's uh, better at the moment or something that you would like to implement that you guys haven't been able to implement that another DAP platform is implementing? Well, um, I I think I would like to uh, see more uh, decentralized applications uh, being built. We've just released our, our smart contract implementation called Crypto Conditions. Um, so it's extremely new right now. And uh, so there's only a few dApps that are being built. So I think that that'd be the, our one uh, we, just, we just need more uh, 
decentralized applications uh, abound. But in terms of how they're actually implemented, I, I believe that our current system is, is better than uh, what is existing out there, like such as uh, you know, Solidity contracts or right. the uh, or renting RAM through EOS or... <laughs> or uh, <laughs> Yeah, so what what would yeah. be the uh i guess the total utility of kmd um i mean yeah you have ethereum where you know you're paying gas constantly and eos where you are renting out the ram but uh what would be the the full utility of keeping kmd in someone's portfolio well for developers and at least there is uh the utility of the delayed proof of works ecosystem which does require komodo to write to Komodo's blockchain. It, um, that is done through an op return uh, attached to a transaction. Um, it, for the average user, um, if they are a trader, uh, they could take advantage of the zero confirmation trading, which requires a deposit of Komodo, uh, which is held in a, a time-locked uh, address and, or time-locked contract, rather. And also, uh, in terms of, uh, we have a privacy mechanism built in on top of the ZK snarks that we already use called Jumbler, which requires Komodo to use as well. Okay. Uh, do you guys have any foreseeable roadblocks um, in the near future? Uh, like ASIC taking over, uh, you know, oversaturation or anything project specific uh, that you guys are actually working to um, fix or correct? Uh, in, in terms of uh, future roadblocks, um, uh, really, it, it's not so much within the, the tech uh, that I see the roadblocks, but really just uh, the lack of developer talent in, in the, you know, in the cryptosphere right now um, is there are so many uh, things to be done. It's just like there's just not enough people and not enough hours in the, the day to, to get it all completed. Um, but in, in terms of a uh, you know, technology, I, I think it's really just catching people up, you know, to what we have actually accomplished. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest roadblock because it's it's very different than uh, how you would like program a contract on Ethereum or, or a different yeah. blockchain. So kind of going more into uh, the team base, um, since, you know, finding developers is difficult. Uh, what do you guys look for when when you're hiring for Komodo specifically, and how do you pick your staff? Well, uh, when we're hiring for K Komodo uh, specifically, it's, it's really a, a meritocracy is, is how we run. Um, so people typically, they end up uh, you know come making their way into our community and they see a project they like, and then they typically contribute. And and after contributing enough and getting a hang of how, how things are, developed then they try their hand at their own project and if it ends up being successful in in the terms of it working and um being coded rather cleanly then typically some uh, community member will sponsor them and uh they'll end up getting hired by the team okay and is everyone uh is anyone paid in fiat or is it all paid out through komodo uh how, how do you guys compensate the the team members well, uh, a lot of our team members are uh, self-funded or volunteers um, and the okay. ones that are paid uh, either are like uh, notary nodes, uh, which have a um, the special mining right. Uh, so they get funded through that or um, are uh, essentially uh, funded by a patron, which is a better established community member um, who essentially pays them a salary. Um, typically it is in crypto though. I don't know anyone who's getting paid in fiat. Yeah. Um, good to know. There's, yeah, we've had a few projects where they, uh, they mostly pay in fiat and then a lot of people question whether or not they believe in their project or not. Um, so are you, uh, are you partnering with any organizations on or off the blockchain currently? Uh, uh yes. Uh, currently we are, uh, partnered with uh, ValueNet Capital, which is a venture capital firm out of uh, China. Um, we are, uh, we have partnerships with uh, uh, different uh, groups of uh, developers and also exchanges. Um, and uh, additionally, uh, we are looking at future partnerships here that are in the works. 
um, with a KYC provider. Uh, we, we figured in the future, some people who build their own blockchains may have a need for uh, know your customer for whatever application they're building. So uh, we're, we're always uh, looking for uh, people who have established uh, uh, services in the real world that tie into the, into the blockchain ecosystems. Okay. And uh, branching off of KYC, um, does the does Komodo itself fall within the SEC jurisdiction? And if so, um, are you guys working towards compliance, or do you care about compliance? Uh, where where do you guys stand with that? Um, regarding uh, uh, legitimacy under the SEC, uh, we have reached out because this was a question in, internally that we had as well. So we reached out to a, a law firm to and presented our the the state of our uh, ecosystem, and, and according to them, uh, we do not qualify as a security. Um, okay. It basically, for from my understanding of reading the document, it falls sort of under the same exemption as how Ethereum fell. Even though that they did an ICO, they completed all what they promised to do before any tokens were distributed, um, and uh, with several other factors, uh, including our uh, reward, our user based reward mechanism and uh, mining, which require that the uh, inv- the user actually uh, have uh, commit action into the system to gain reward rather than passively receiving some sort of profit. Gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, How does that work for the um, decentralized ICOs that Komodo hosts, basically? Or, is well, that, uh, or does that not Komodo- affect KMD at all? Yeah, the Komodo's, um, the the decentralized ICOs aren't actually like held by Komodo. Komodo itself does not run uh, any decentralized ICO. Um, It is the project that actually builds on it that Uh, does it legally. Yeah, so legally it's the organization that holds the ICO themselves that is liable. Correct. Uh, Have you ever ever had a DICO with KYC compliance? Or you wouldn't know. Uh, but currently, uh, no, we we have not had one yet. Um, that's why we are uh, in the midst of partnering with a KYC provider uh, because we have heard uh, several developers express interest in doing a more uh, traditional regulated type of ICO or I guess what would be called now a securities token offering. So they, they will need that uh, official uh gatekeeper there to keep out the bad actors interesting and side note how do you how does komodo pay for let's say the law firm to figure out if it's security or not is that all the notes paying for it together or um no no it typically uh a member of the community or, or team uh steps up and handles uh things that um we cannot do ourselves directly in crypto. Uh, obviously, most law firms, some law firms take crypto, but most don't. Uh, this one I did not, I believe not. So one of our community members was kind enough to uh, seek out that on our behalf and uh, cover the, the expenses that were incurred during that. Oh, that's great. Uh, what type of projects do you guys see as being um, uh, best used on Komodo? Uh, would it be more currency based or utility based more like ethereum uh kind of game and more of the application stuff uh what what do you what do you guys see as like a best best case use of komodo's platform uh the best case uh use is if if someone has an application that requires uh, extensive uh, scalability um and very uh, diverse features that you will not it would have a hard time putting all on one uh, platform um currently we're developing things such as uh, oracle chains uh we have dubbed them um that will feed information from third-party source into a blockchain and then from that blockchain uh using a mechanism we call uh m-o-m-o-m uh to relay that to all other chains in that uh projects uh, blockchain cluster um, uh, 
we see that as one of the, the, the big uh, uh, future uh, uses of, of blockchain. Um, additionally, uh, applications, uh, decentralized applications, uh, we think are going to be uh, built on Komodo and with greater frequency. And, and even to the point that we see that maybe even projects that are on Ethereum that started on Ethereum will actually migrate off towards our platform, um, mainly for uh, uh, reasons of independence and autonomy. Do you guys have a, a few projects that you know of that are based on KMD? Um, just little quick pitches of like two or three projects? Sure. Um, so uh, one of the projects that actually uh, just started about a, a month ago, a little over a month ago now, uh, it's called uh, Pirate. Um, now, Pirate is a currency style blockchain, um, but it is entirely private transactions. Uh, you can, with very limited exception, um, there's, uh, you, you can only do private transactions on there. So it, at this current rate, it is the most uh, private blockchain out there, even more private than Monero, because the anonymous set in the, in the Pirate blockchain is, um, 99.9 percent .9%. the only transparent transactions on that blockchain are the notary notes uh transactions to provide the depot security to that chain uh additionally there was uh another project that is right now and it's um just uh planning in the funding phase it's called coin collect which is a third-party implementation of our bartered executive um it actually will be a mobile DEX uh, implementation, which we think will okay. take off rather well. And um, there's one more uh, called Utrum, which is like a, uh, a review site um, and uh, analysis uh, tool that rewards users for providing reviews and uh, predictions and creating a ranking system on blockchain based off of those reviews and predictions. Nice. Uh, it kind of sounds uh, a little bit similar to like Syndicator, but um, I don't know if you're familiar with that project at all. But definitely uh, cool concepts. Um, I did see Pirate Coin in your guys' Discord, um, which I, I believe it's called the uh, tickers R, like A R R R. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is pretty so awesome. I like that. Um,. Yeah, and if anyone listening wants to, if you guys join the Komodo uh, Discord, there is a way to get tips, and I think people like do lightning strikes or thunder strikes or something. Yeah, we call them cannon, cannon struck. <laughs> oh, cannon strikes. Um, yeah, so it's a good way to, if you want to earn some very very tiny amounts of R or even KMD, they do have a a, a tipping bot system in there. Uh, where you can collect for just being in their discord, which is pretty cool um, So moving on uh, do you guys have a uh, Kind of a, a roadmap in place currently um, or Are you just taking it, you know sprint by sprint and making modifications along the way? Uh, yes, it, it, it's more uh, like that. We, we do have um, some internal roadmaps about uh, things that we'd like to polish up and, and get done. However, um, Komodo is more than just a, the, you know, the, the main platform itself. So it's very hard to uh, coordinate all the different projects under one single roadmap. Um, so yes, I, I guess you could say we're currently going to sprint by sprint, but in internally we have some things um, that are in the pipeline with some definitive timelines, such as the Agama rebrand, the um, polishing of different applications like Barter Decks, and uh, the website refresh and logo rebrand. And how do you guys uh, inform the public when those milestones are reached or when they're publicized? Do you guys just put it out on social media? Is there a specific platform that you guys kind of, that's like the go-to? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, well, typically first we publish an article on our blog at blog.committerplatform.com and then it gets to different social media sites like we are Twitter account, Facebook, Reddit, Telegram. Uh, we're pretty much on every major social media platform. Awesome. Uh, and do you guys have any advisors 
like on the project or are you guys kind of past the that initial advisor stage essentially uh, uh, no, we, we have uh, a couple of advisors right now and are currently in talks with several others. Um, okay. Our two main advisors that we have right now are, uh, uh, one is a professor at the University of Texas at Arlington, and uh, he is basically providing us a way to get Komodo into the universities uh, via hackathons and being via, you know, extracurricular type of activities. Uh, to show that students that a the blockchain space is more than just uh, you know the Bitcoin clones and Ethereum, <laughs> and uh, okay. the other that we have is uh, Mike. Uh, uh, I'm not sure I pronounced his name wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Mike Tultung. Uh He is a former vice president of Microsoft and um, a distinguished engineer. Uh, he's uh, basically led the development of the .NET framework. Uh, and he nice. has created a uh, Komodo-based project called Veris, which is focusing on uh, creating different uh, asset chain, or what we call independent blockchain uh, parameters, and also focusing on uh, voting on the blockchain. All right. That's pretty awesome. Um, if you guys could uh, integrate your company, and I ask this to every project just because it's uh, pretty interesting, the different responses, but um if you guys could integrate your project with any company in the world uh what would you guys pick why what would you pick personally oh that, <laughs> wow i have to think about that for a second um there's so many uh you know places yeah. i would love to see meadow at <laughs> so <laughs> um, but I, I would like to see us in uh, a lot of uh different uh internet-based service providers um, certain uh, platforms like Microsoft, for instance, uh, has uh, blockchain uh, platforms built into them. I believe like Stratus is built into Microsoft Azure. I think Ethereum is too. Um, we currently do have one that we have made an excellent partnership for. Uh, but however, I cannot say much about it. Uh, but I guarantee everyone will be quite pleased when, when, they, when we do make an official announcement here in the, the next couple of months. Nice. Um, so we don't get any, uh, any leaks or anything here. No little hints. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll just say it's the, uh, one of the largest companies in the world. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, I guess that's a pretty good, big hint. Um, are there any uh, misconceptions? Oh, you want to, sorry. Yeah. Jesse uh, one Fox. more question because I was, uh, reading some of JL, JL's, uh, comments about Komodo and the future of Komodo. And he mentioned, uh, which is two years ago by now, that he saw Komodo as uh, under the hood tech and then a fancy GUI that will hide it for the end users, kind of like the CPUs for laptops kind of thing, if you want to do an analogy. How far away do you think that Komodo is from reaching that goal, from just being tech under the hood, but having a GUI that is yeah, pretty much as user friendly enough that you don't notice it? I, I believe we made uh, quite a bit of progress, especially since uh, he described that. But uh, it's um, the under the hood portion is, I would say, about ninety percent done. There's some polishing that needs to be done with uh, the crypto conditions, um, or uh, fancy GUI, if you will. Um, Agama has finally just been ported into Android, and currently we are working on getting it uh, into iOS. So I, I believe we we're not too far away from. Uh, JL77's vision. That's great. And um, he left out this part, but this is just my question is, um, how do you think you're going to have the adoption of the, because you, you basically have the tech at this point to, uh, at least for most of it, uh, and the GUI is slowly coming there. How do you think you're going to get the adoption like the final part, which is basically just the main part of adoption uh, users that actually use it all the day uh, to your use case. What's the plan for that one? The plan for user adoption is is really through the the uh, applications that get built onto Komodo. So uh, we uh, Komodo will typically be the coin that's most traded within the ecosystem and typically traded with all the 
projects that get built on it. Um, so we do see a lot of uh, users from these third-party projects uh, coming into Komodo, whether directly or indirectly. But uh, the adoption that we're really focusing on is uh, with developers. Um, for two reasons one uh to get more applications built and uh two is the that when they have their own independent blockchain uh they will need to use services like the late proof of work which require komodo to uh to function all right and if you had to like mention uh maybe one maybe two whatever however many you prefer to like measure um the adoption of komodo how what what number would you pick like users transactions um d apps d icos um okay so the the metric i would uh judge komodo by uh is really um uh applications built with, with the technology and the state that those applications are in i mean it's easy to just start a project but it's very hard to actually complete a fully working project and Komodo has shown to put out time and time again fully working uh, projects uh, such as our Jumbler or Delay Proof Work or our Gama Wallet. Um, so I believe that that's really the, the number one metric uh, to judge uh, the, you know, the progress in the Komodo community. Is, is Komodo a project which is more aimed at First we make the tech, then come the users, or first come the users and then comes the tech? First comes the tech, then then the users. I mean, uh, a lot of the projects out there are you know, straight up clones of other projects and Komodo is not like that. Um, so we, you have to build something that differentiates you from every other project. Yeah. Uh, we believe that's the, you know, the more prudent way to uh, pursue um, the destiny that we want to follow for the uh, because the main komodo pretty much rests on jl's vision for most of it at least for as far as i can find it's it's mostly his vision that uh of having a network effect for komodo uh which in the end helps up the blockchain space in general right correct yes yeah uh, so um, with that in mind and attack first, let's say that he, his vision is basically the part that is being executed. What if the vision and let's say, um, you, you might call it market and just call blockchain in general, the market the market doesn't have a need for it after it, most of it has been made. How do you keep up with, um, validating if the need for something that you're developing is still there, such as you mentioned before we started in the, uh, in the uh, podcast that. Supernet was one of the things that JL uh, envisioned, but in the end it got um, pretty much absorbed by Komodo itself, uh, which is not a negative thing, but um, how do you think his vision aligns with whatever the blockchain market needs and how do you validate it? Okay, um, so what JL777 um did with Komodo is allowed everyone to, to build it, their own blockchain. So if, you know, it's something, you know, the, the winds of change come about what people find is uh, necessary in a blockchain project, um, you know, it, it makes uh, Komodo either obsolete or, or, uh, you know, it, the, the crowd lacks interest in it. Um, it is not uh, any, issue for us to adapt and, and change to what is uh, being what is the, the market deems necessary in a blockchain project. Uh, like you said, with SuperNet, uh, you know, all the these core technologies were built during the SuperNet days and got consumed by Komodo. Um, if you know, something similar happens in the future that uh, Komodo becomes obsolete, we could take all the foundational work in Komodo and uh, use it in a new technology product. Um, you know, we don't like uh, the tech going to waste if, uh, you know, if at all possible, unless something that gets uh, developed out there that is significantly better. And then typically we use whatever is best in it, in our project. We're constantly adapting and evolving. Yeah, that's very interesting. I also very much like that um, 
the vision that JL uh, mentioned, which is, uh, I'll link it later on, the, the pieces, at least the pieces that I like the most, um, is that ever since 2014 through 2016, uh, Komodo has still been in a straight path towards whatever he envisioned at the moment, and it's still doing it. So it's great that you guys keep going towards a one goal, basically. Um, Odas, are there any misconceptions about the coin or false information kind of floating around uh, that you guys want to clear up? Uh, well, yes. Uh, you know, uh, one of them is that uh, you know Komodo is uh, strictly a privacy coin. Privacy is just one aspect of Komodo. Um, uh, additionally, uh, you know, one of the things we always hear is regarding the anonymity of some of our developers. Uh, you know, people right. uh, question that. I mean, however. Bitcoin was created by anonymous developer, PureCoin, um, several other cryptocurrencies have had anonymous developers, um, you know, uh, just create them and, and develop them. And so I, you know, I, I believe that comes from more of the, the new uh, people to the cryptocurrency scene because uh, they're not used to it. They come from a, the traditional world where you can see a picture of the CEO or, or um, right. you know, company members on, on the website. But um in Komodo, uh, we, we do place a high value on privacy, so um, we do not plan on changing that anytime soon. Um, you know, it, we we recognize that uh, you know people can you know some sometimes it's better if people are allowed to work anonymously, so um, they aren't just harassed by constant questions or or you know um, you know media fud and similar types of things. So going back to the question of um, how do you guys, being anonymous, um, how do you guys build trust out of anonymity um, in the crypto space in a in a time when uh, you know scams are kind of running rampant, and not being able to put a face to something uh, really scares a lot of people. Uh, it does. Um, uh, to, to make one point, not not all of our community members are. are are anonymous um like myself for instance i'm i'm a pretty public person but um we you know our trust is really developed through actions okay and jail 777 yeah. and the other developers have consistently proven over a period of many years that um to put out good code and good projects and uh to deliver on their promises um so while they uh, may be anonymous um their actions uh speak louder than words do you think that it, it's led to a, a slower adoption uh, being private um it may be a little bit um it, mainly because uh this recent wave of uh, uh crypto enthusiasts are uh, more used to the traditional world but i i believe that is a obstacle that is uh not insurmountable i i believe that at the end of the day people are going to use the best technology available and yeah. um, I believe Komodo is that technology. Okay. Um, that was actually my last question. So uh, <laughs> just in time. Um, uh, Fox, did you have anything else that you wanted to throw on there? No, I think I just discussed most of it. Oh, um, uh, yeah. it might be good before we end it at the, um, um, because we already discussed it before the uh, podcast started, but the 5.1% uh, 5 5 APR for KMD holders. How that works okay uh so commando has a mechanism built into it that rewards uh coin holders for sending transactions uh this sending transactions uh helps uh aid uh you know the health of blockchain and uh privacy as well uh the more transactions on chain the harder it is to track uh transactions uh, Additionally, this uh, this reward mechanism allows the average user to participate in the coin generation process, while in other coins it either requires expensive mining hardware or a large amount of coins to stake with, which is out of the range of many average uh, people who are getting into crypto. Um, so we believe that it's important for people to take part of uh, this process. It, it gets people involved and more interested in the cryptocurrency space. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much a uh, bounty program for holders. If you want to make it like uh, very continual. oversimplified. <laughs> yes. 
All right, well, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, so thank you guys for listening. And if you like our show and want to know more, check out www.edgetrading.io. And if you want to join us live next week, just jump in our Discord. Um, you can just Google search Edge Analysis Discord and you'll find it. It's, uh, you know, only the first 20 pages. Um, and thank you, Poly Crypto Blog, for joining us today and talking about Komodo. I look forward to the future of Komodo. It sounds like a solid project. I've been a long-term fan of it and uh, look forward to seeing you more in your guys' Discord as well. Thank you uh, for having us as well. It was a pleasure to be here.